Severe scoliosis. Is it too late to get treatment? Unfortunately, scoliosis can range widely in severity, and conditions can range from mild scoliosis to moderate scoliosis to severe, and something I like to call very severe. And the condition severity is typically determined by something called a Cobb angle. And the Cobb angle is an angle that's measured on an x-ray, and as the angle increases, the severity increases. And the severity of the condition is one of the important classifications that we use to develop treatment plans to develop a, a customized program for that person. Now, when we look at a Cobb angle, this is done on an x-ray, and it's, these lines are drawn from the topmost tilted vertebra to the bottommost tilted vertebra, and this intersecting lines express a degrees. And of course, as the degrees go up, this means a more severe angle. Scoliosis, we know, is a progressive condition, meaning where it's diagnosed doesn't mean where it's going to end up later. It is its very nature to worsen over time. And the condition severity levels are also is what's associated with the progressive nature of scoliosis, which leads to more and more effects as the curves worsen. So mild scoliosis cases can progress to severe scoliosis cases, and this is especially true if it's left untreated, and especially true during very specific times in a person's life. And the most risky times are when patients are growing and developing, and when patients are in a later stage of life, post 50 or 60 years of age. During these times is when we see curve progression to be the most risky and also the most accelerated. Now, severe scoliosis is when that angle on the x-ray measures 40 degrees or greater. Now, to be classified with severe, it just taking into account the size of the scoliosis. It doesn't need to take account anything else. But we consider that more as the curves become bigger, they're more likely to cause more problems, especially if these curves are progressing in the adult form. Now, in children, the typically the, the main effect that we tend to see is postural deviation. At 40 degrees, we're going to see significant postural deviation relative to somebody who's at 30 or somebody who's at 20 degrees. In fact, what I like to say is that the postural effect tends to double every 10 degrees. So 10 degree curvatures are very hardly noticeable. 20 degree curvatures will look twice as bad as 10, but again, not very significant. 30 degrees will be twice, it looks twice as bad as uh, a 20, but four times as bad as a 10 degrees. And so on with a four degree curve, it look twice as bad as a 30, four times as bad as a 20, and then like eight times as bad as a 10 degree curvature. So this tends to exponentially look worse. So when you don't see this linear progression effect in scoliosis, it's an exponential. The same thing true is in the progression in the adult form. As cur curves progress in the adult form, as they progress, it's exponentially more likely to cause pain. So if you have a 30 degree curve and you progress from 30 to 35, you may not experience that much. But you progress from 35 to 38, that three degrees may start causing pain. And then from 38 to 42, it may cause a lot more pain because it it exponentially causes problems as these curves progress in the adult form as a result of compression. So in children, the number one effect we see is postural deviation. In adult forms, the number one thing we tend to feel is progression. In addition, as curves become severe, the likelihood of progression increases. So if a patient is growing and they're already in the severe stage, they're more likely to progress every single time they grow. In the adult stage, we know the bigger the curve, the more likely it is to progress as a result of gravity. So in the adult form, we say an average 50 degree curve progresses about one degree a year in middle adult life. The bigger the curve, an 80 degree curve, will progress faster than a 50. A 30 degree curve will progress less than a 50, but average, we say one degree a year. So when should we consider treatment? Well, obviously, since we know scoliosis is progressive and we know more than likely it's going to worsen over time, we always recommend treatment as soon as possible. As soon as you find the scoliosis, we recommend treating it because the more likely you are to get a positive result. There's never a 
ever can be treatment guarantees, like 100% results any given time. But we do know as curves get bigger, they're more complex and they're more difficult to treat. And the smaller they are, the easier they are to treat and the more likely they are to deliver a result. Now, unfortunately, that my average patient I see is a severe scoliosis. My average patient that walks my office is normally around 50 degrees is the average curve we tend to treat because most patients are told to do nothing until the curve becomes severe, which is typically 40 plus degrees. Then normally they're told they're recommending surgery. And at that point, they're trying to avoid surgery. And normally that's where we get phone calls. So the, my average patient that walks my office is severe. The majority, the minority of cases I treat are mild or moderate because most patients do exactly what their orthopedic surgeon tells them to do. The curve worsens to a point where they're told they need surgery and then they're looking for options. Now, even though we majority of the time treat surgical level curves that are severe, that we're trying to bring them below surgical standards, so therefore they don't have to uh, face or consider surgery, I much rather treat smaller curves. Mild and moderate curves might have a much better reduction. So if we consider severe curves and can you opt for treatment? The answer is yes, because that's by far the most common patient I tend to treat. Now, when we look at severe, let's divide the severe category into two ranges. I call severe 40 degrees, anything 40 degrees plus, but then I also call very severe when we start breaking 80 degrees. Now, we do have limitations. As curves get bigger, we reduce smaller percentages. So normally, our average reduction when we deal with patients can be somewhere around 30%. So curves 60 degrees or less, we have a very good chance of getting them below surgical threshold or very close to that. And that's what I mean by 40 degrees. So we have a, a 60 degree curve or less. We follow the right treatment program. We follow the right rehabilitation, right, right corrective bracing. And the person's very, very compliant. We can get a significant reduction in their scoliosis to where they're very close to becoming a non-surgical curvature. Once we break 60 degrees, curve reduction below surgical threshold may not be possible but there are still patients that we can still treat and reduce curves. And these patients are normally don't want surgical recommendations. They don't want to go through surgery for whatever reason. They're scared of having spinal fusion. They don't want to have the impact on their health and well-being. They could have religious reasons why they don't want to have spinal fusion. So we still treat these patients, but normally we're not getting them below surgical threshold, but we're still reducing and managing the scoliosis to stop the curve progression. Many times adult patients won't, can't qualify for surgical fusion because the, patient, the surgeons don't think they're gonna heal and recover well, and they could have a severe scoliosis, 70, 80, 90 degrees. Well, we're not gonna let the patients do anything because if they, do, if they don't do anything, the curve will continue to worsen. So we still treat these patients, even though we know we can't get them below surgical threshold, but since they can't have surgery as an option because the likelihood of them recovering properly, we still treat them conservatively and still manage and reduce their curves and more likely try to stop their progression. So here at Scholar Reduction Center, we are definitely proactive by treating scoliosis as soon to diagnosing it. However, unfortunately, the majority of patients I treat are surgical because most con most traditional options are negating the need for treatment when curves are small, let them worsen, and now they're told they need surgery. But how even when curves hit this severe standard when they're considered a surgical treatment option, we still integrate and customize treatment plans to get reductions. And even at that time, the closer we treat you to that surgical recommendation, the better result we're gonna get. So if you have a 45 or 50 degree curve and you've just been told you need surgery, letting it worsen to 70 or 80 isn't gonna produce a better result. We still recommend it, treating it as soon as possible to get the best possible reduction. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.